All right, so that was copyright criminals. We're going to continue talking about that film and we'll talk a little bit about, um, you know, sampling itself as it relates to case law and all that stuff. And so, um, you know, some of the things I thought that were really interesting and that come from this is like the opening scene with Jeff, uh, Jeff Chang, who basically, you know, says that records, vinyl records are themselves are literally historical like historical records of musicals past and so music's past and so uh you know what sampling artists are doing there is like reintroducing us to our history which i think is like an underlying concept of of remixing in general and we could even think to like bland corporate remixing like what disney does with like uh you know reboots and sequels and stuff and stuff like that um you know uh remakes and all, all, all that stuff. So I just think that that's an interesting point that he sort of brings up in the beginning. And then I think you really have to consider how using turntables, these consumptive devices, right, literally made for you to, you know, sit down, eat a bag of chips and listen to music or do whatever, just literally consume it. You know, it started with, with, with these DJs, hip hop DJs in the South Bronx who took two turntables some sort of mixer that they created and uh, took two copies of a record and created a loop based upon a drum break or, or drum breaks themselves. That mentality, that analog sampling practice, right, where they're taking other people's records and two turntables and creating new music out of it, essentially, right? Because that was like, before you sampled digitally and created loops, you did it with two turntables and two records. And then that mentality, that logic of the hip hop DJ is sort of what became the underlying logic for the practice or the underlying aesthetic for the practice of digital sampling once that technology became uh, readily available. So it's one of the, the interesting and first instances uh, where, you know, subcultural remixing becomes like popular culture, becomes, ma becomes mainstream, I mean, hip hop, rap. Is, is totally, you know, mainstream culture uh, at this point, you know, 40, almost damn near 50 years later, okay? Um, but I mean, like, I think, you know, one thing to think about is why do people sample cert certain, certain music, right? Like, why do you sample beats? Like, when I sample a beat, you know, sometimes it's about tribute or, or you know, I'm giving myself a challenge. I'm like, I'm going to sample, you know, uh, an Iranian folk record and try to make a beat out of it, right? But a lot of times when I'm like listening through stuff, you know, I'm listening for little snatches, little bits and pieces that I think I can do something dope with, that I think I can chop up and flip um, and, ma and make new. So, you know, when, I, when I'm listening for sample, sample material, I hear something that sounds good. I hear something I like the texture, like how it sounds. I like how I think it can be flipped. Um, you know, basically because it sounds good and I think I can make something better uh, out of it, something new uh, out of it. So it's very rare that, you know, people are sampling for critical, cr you know, c commentary or critique that, it, that it's fair use, you know. Um, but I love, the, I love the quote that, that um, and I hope you picked up on it, that Shock G from Digital Underground said where he says, you know, he, he makes the analogy of the painter and photographer, right? So when photography came out, you could just like go into a landscape and snap a picture. Ver you know, that was disvalued as art because the painter would spend a day plus painting that same landscape. And so we all know that photography is an art, you know, and, and, and it just took a while for society to catch up with the technology and, and, and coming to terms with it. You had the same stuff with like, uh, synthesizers versus pianos or um, electric guitar versus like an acoustic guitar you know just these levels of accepting things as in instruments I thought that was a real interesting quote you know it's like obviously people who play traditional musical instruments and are trained in that there's a lot of you know, training, a lot of knowledge, a lot of money that goes into learning how to read music, how to play, play music and stuff. So obviously when someone comes around 
and they put your music on a turntable or they sample from a CD or a tape or from the internet or something like that, you know, you, you get a little bit of loss, loss aversion. You also feel like that's not creating you. You just took my sound, you know, and I think there's, there's a lot of, um, value in that perspective uh because we see some types of sampling right like mc hammers can't you know can't touch this where he samples rick james super freak super freak was a major major banger it was a major hit you know and mc hammer just took it didn't do anything creative to it and made a huge huge hit out of it okay same with coolio's gangster paradise right like stevie wonder this like incredible musical genius you know, wrote Pastimes Paradise, and along comes freaking Coolio, and Tom Silverman says, who, who the hell is Coolio? Yeah, who the hell is Coolio? Like, he was a flash in the pan, you know, like, who is that dude, you know? And, uh, you know, comes along and basically loops Stevie's stuff. I mean, Puff Daddy did this all the time, Puffy, Diddy, whatever you want to call him. You know, all of his early hits were taking other people's hits and flossing them up put an R&B singer on them and a rapper and that was it you know versus when we get to the end where we have LP El Producto from Run the Jewels who says you know if you can tell where uh, what I use then I haven't done my job right where it's about taking something and changing it manipulating it masking it hiding it for multiple reasons you, number one you, you just want to flip it like that other type of production, the MC Hammer, um, Coolio stuff, that's considered whack. Like, that's lazy, cornball shit, um, you know. But, like, taking one of those songs and flipping them is, like, totally different. You know, like, if you took Super Freak and flipped it, like, I'm talking, like, you wouldn't even recognize it. Like, that's the goal for a lot of people uh, is, is, to do, is to do that part of that's legal like right you don't want to want to or can afford to license it um, or you don't want to license it you want to be more outlaw about it and you're also not moving units like selling records and getting noticeability like someone like Kanye West who has to clear everything because someone's going to hear it and someone's going to going to sue him so it's probably cheaper just to clear it on the front than try to deal with it on the back side so the interesting thing here that I, I hope you get from this, <laughs> freaking ants, um, that I hope you get from this is, you know, when the Bismarck Key case happened, at the time, the, the general technique for sampling was looping. You'd find like a two-bar loop, a four-bar loop, right? Like a melodic loop. You'd loop it up. So you'd find, when I say find a loop, you find something that you could turn into a two or four-bar loop that sounded good. And then you'd loop a two or four bar um, drum break and then you match up the tempos for them and put them together maybe you'd add some you know other samples and embellishments to it now you're probably sitting there like that's lazy that you know whatever and maybe that that is but what happened from the the Bismarck key thing is that once he got hit for that people started to change how they sampled they started chopping, so they started taking a loop, like a Gilbert, or, Gilbert O'Sullivan loop, like Biz used, and they'd break it into, you know, take that two-bar loop and break it into sixteenths, you know, and then they'd replay those sixteenths in different in different orders to make a new melody. And then they started put, you know, pitching stuff way down or pitching stuff way up, or they started filtering out the highs or the mids or the bass or whatever, you know, or they played stuff backwards or put on effects and or and or all of that, partly to avoid getting sued. Because again, it's so hard to clear stuff because you have to get permission um, and pay, you know, all of the songwriters and then any recording artists. And if literally if one person says no, you can't use the sample. <laughs> so in some ways it actually forced innovation. There, there is a chilling effect too, right? Where like some people make the hottest beat, like the illest beat, and they won't put it out because they're, they don't want to risk getting, getting sued. So a lot of people don't create the way they would create because they're incredibly afraid of, of getting sued for it. 
But then again, the law some in some ways forced innovation. It forced people to change how they sampled and how they made sample based beats so that they wouldn't get sued. Okay. And there are, you know, there's there's two two classes, right? Those who can afford it and those who can't. Like I can't afford to clear nothing. And there's no reason for me to clear any anything. No one cares. Like I'm not moving units. But like if I wanted to get some sync deals, I wanted to get placed in advertisements, video games like my homeboy just got a beat placed on um, an airline thing where like it tells you to put on your seat belts and how to use the masks and shit like that. You can't do that if it's got samples in it. They still, you know, you still make sample based music. You sample your own guitar playing or your own saxophone playing or, you know, you know, music concrete stuff. So like banging on stuff like that or, you know, crumpling paper or whatever literally whatever to make to make beats out of where you don't have like actual sampled people sampled music but the thing is is like if i tried to clear something say i made a beat someone wants to sync it in a video game you know and then i'm like frig i gotta try to clear this dude i call up you know warner chapel publishing to try to clear it on the publishing side and i call up uh you know universal music group to clear it on the master right side no one's calling me back. Not one single person is going to call me back. I ain't getting no calls, right? But Kanye West people call someone and they pick up the phone, right? For multiple reasons, but mainly because they know they're going to get real money out of it. They're not going to get shit out of me. So that's just some of the bits and pieces. I mean, you, you really have so much cool stuff like George Clinton's like career getting revitalized based upon sampling, primarily from G-Funk music, uh, like Dr. Dre and uh, Snoop Dogg's first album. And that style really sampled George on the heavy duty tip. Um, and that revitalized his touring career. He started getting paid, um, you, know, you know, back royalties and, and stuff like that. <laughs> Um, so, I mean, it presents all the sort of, you know, sides, like the dude, the recording engineer dude who really didn't like sampling, you know, he still says like, I don't want to get the law involved, you know, like he doesn't think it's valuable. He doesn't think it's art, but he doesn't want to like have people being sued. He wants people to play instruments, you know, to learn, to learn that. And, you know, I'm going to say straight up, you know, I tried <laughs> trumpet, saxophone, piano, uh, guitar I just started you know a year and a half ago learning how to play play drums you know for fun playing hit I just want to play beats but you know like actually learn how to read music playing those instruments it just I never had the attention for it I never had the span you know for it I never never wanted to do it that I guess that much but I wanted to be musical and so like DJing and sampling like you know that's the way I, I did things. And yeah, maybe you start a little bit ahead in the game because you don't have to read music. You know, you don't have to go through that that process, but it's still an incredibly musical, technique-driven, um, uh, you know, production technique, you know, um, that I finally think people are like, recognize it as, as valuable. 